Hello and welcome back to YCS Utrecht, the 200th YCS. We are here in round number eight. European edition. European edition, yeah. We should put that on at the start of it every time. Ah, need to get approval for that. Can't, yeah. be, can't be spending time on this changing true. titles. Round uh, number eight. Usually this would be the last round where yes. Ollie would tie his tie around his head or something. But well, well, don't spoil all the surprises. Okay. Um, but yeah, actually, if you guys, because of the huge number of players, we're going to be going one more round today, followed by three rounds tomorrow, and then a top 64 cut for good measure. Yeah. You should have a pretty good idea who's the winner after that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Plenty of rounds. So this round, just as every other round, we've been having a really interesting uh, feature map. No. Wrong words. We found a really interesting feature match, and this round is no different. But we always like to glance over, see if the players can hear us. The answer is no. And we have a Pendulum deck. Versus Sky Striker. Both of these guys are still undefeated in the tournament. Excellent. Oh, both of them. Yep. Well, that should be so, interesting to see how that plays out. Yeah, so Pendulum still not gone away. It does horrible, horrible things to your opponent. And yeah. as long as he's able to do those horrible things, it will keep, it will keep popping up. Yeah, just like Burning Abyss. Yes, although it did lose a number of Electromites uh, on this last Forbidden Limited list. So yeah. you'd think that would hinder it a lot, but the chances are because people just saw it completely off the radar, it's probably going uncontested. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, let's not make you guys wait any longer. Let's get over to the table and Come on, see let's see some action. duels. All right, guys, we are also ready to get our game one for round... It says round number seven here. I'm, I'm I think it's round eight, yeah. It is definitely round eight. I'm, I'm going to change that very soonish, but um, <laughs> most important part, of course, is the player names Pascal Kim, Sky Striker Pure, Sekias Shaw, uh, Pendulum Magician from the UK. Indeed. Um, do you know him? A bit. A bit. Okay, well, what does that mean? What, what do you make of him? Uh, I don't know him that well to make anything of him. <sighs> I know he's from the UK, so I should support him, right? Yeah, you should. All right, then. It's it's fine. So so you're rooting for Sekias? I'm rooting for, yeah, it's a pendulum deck. It's a pendulum mean. deck, okay. We've got Sky Striker, which appears to be our, like, stock opponent. We mm -hmm. have an interesting deck versus Sky Striker. It seems to be the theme. It seems to be Different the theme deck. of the day. Sky Striker is our opponent of choice. It's going to be interesting to see if it's the same in the other regions, actually, <laughs> uh, if, if everybody's having that same story for this weekend. Is there anything that pops out if you're looking at the deck list? Is uh, there something I mean, the Sky like? Striker deck looks very much like the other Sky Striker yeah. deck list. So we've got this uh, trendy tech Eagle Booster at three again. Mm -hmm. uh, this sort of like, I'm going to play this Eagle Booster and you're not going to kill me. And then Sky Striker, they, they always have lots of cards. So if you don't kill them, they have lots of cards and that's quite bad. So you need to kill them. <laughs> okay, you're, you're uh, learning some new things here. If you have indeed. lots of cards, that's not good. That's not good. The Pendulum deck, honestly, it looks very much like what Pendulum decks used to look like before they lost two copies of Electromite. All right. Um, I don't, I don't know how that means it's going to work. Uh, I mean, pendulum decks, the three elect, you know, when you were using more than one electromite, you were going pretty crazy. Yeah. So you could still win a lot of games just on the first electromite. Yeah. Uh, so I think, I don't know. I assume it's just going to work just like old pendulum used to. I don't really see it should work any different. It looks very, very similar. The list to old, um, or like what pendulum lists look like last format and I don't know why the main deck would have changed that much just because the extra decks changed all right um, so it's yeah. these guys mentioned it both of these guys are undefeated at the moment um, we might be able to bring you a quick look at the top tables at the start of this round these are all undefeated players of course that's why they are at the very top of the field and we do see a lot of sky striker however there's a burning abyss deck on table number three true draco on uh, table number two then a lot of Sky Strike again, and table number five is already our feature match for this round. So it's, it's looking like Sky Striker has a lot of representatives and also towards the, the top of the field, basically. They're climbing that mountain. Indeed. But every once in a while, we there's, see there's something quite else. quite a lot of different decks, yeah? yeah. It does seem to be, you know, something. Sky Strike, yeah. <laughs> and also yeah. a lot of players that we uh, remembered from last events, like Temis Kitsis, yeah, who we also from featured this today, weekend. Yeah, yeah uh, Jake Quincy, of, of course. course. That's... Pretty interesting feature match, actually, these two guys. And um, Omar Mahmoud, we've had him in the feature match before. Alessio Giordani is a name that rings a bell for me, at least. Indeed. Then if we move a little bit further down, I think we got a UK player on every one of these uh, tables of five players each. Uh, here we have Tom Rose, of course, with Burning Abyss. And um, then also Connor Sue. And he's playing against... Um, 
Chingun Ariunbad, who is actually from Mongolia. And I have to admit, I had to look up the flag. It's it's not one where I'm like, oh, oh yeah, I know yeah. this one. I'll grant you that. Didn't know that one either. All right. So let's just look at five more tables, if we can, to round up the top 20 players or top 20 tables. Uh, tables. Top 40 players. Top 40 players. There we go. Although that's not necessarily the case. Yeah, it doesn't ish. Need ish. <laughs> All right, so you have a good idea. There's a lot of Sky Striker towards the top of the field, but every once in a while something else pops in. Still a fair few true Jake. I mean, this is kind of decks you'd expect to be around. Yeah. And um, I think with that, guys, we are indeed ready. Those two players are definitely ready. They can't wait to get their game on. So let's kick it off with round number eight, Pascal Kim versus Sakaias Shaw. All right, here we have them. Pascal on the left, Sakaya is on the right. Quick handshake, double checking with the judges that they are allowed to go first. And um, then one it's of them is going to go first. Yeah, it looked like I, I think Sakaya drew his cards first, so maybe that means he's going first. <laughs> that could be an indication. Yeah, I don't, there's no obvious one person's going to choose to go second here. So it's not like the rounds before. Yes, yeah. So we're just going to have to wait and see uh, who who's going to start and what's in their hand. Pascal has got a head on the uh, cards in hand, though. It looks like a fairly fairly pleasant hand for the Sky Striker deck. And it, interestingly enough, it seems like um, we've got a couple of guys in the chat that know these two guys, and they are rooting for them. So I'm going to do a very quick poll here. Prepare that. Um, Pascal Kim. Are we going to find out who's going first? Uh, it looks like... The Pendulum player is going first, Zekias. So Foolish Burial is, well, it's a great card to start with in any deck, to be honest. Uh, the Pendulum's target of choice is the Supreme King Dragon Dark Worm, which can special summon itself, and then add another Supreme King card from the deck to the hand. That's normally Supreme King Kate Gate Zero, mm -hmm. which is a zero scale, which was one of the new tech that came out for Pendulum a while ago. It used to be one, but now it's like, now you can even Pendulum summon level one monsters. With your zero scale, yeah, it does a great job. It's like a free, s you know, you want to get pendulum monsters on the field at the beginning with to link summon, so it opens up extra zones for you to pendulum into, and it gets you a free card, which is pretty, pretty great. And we got a very even distribution when it comes to voting for who's going to win, although we don't have that many votes in. It's, it's changing pretty rapidly. <laughs> yeah, Sakaya's at the moment has a few more fans. I mean, it's a bit unfair because they can see how the game's going. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's part of the fun. That's, that's part, part of the, of the fun. fun. Yeah. So the, I think the Pendulum have to be a little bit more nervous now, because normally you would just throw out your Electromite, and then if it died, you could just make another one. But now if it dies, you can't. <laughs> that's that's it. That's sounds it. like a sound strategy if you and ask That's your me. luck, isn't it? Yeah. If it gets ogred, it gets ogred. It's gone. So you can't just... I mean, not, I mean, it's quite hard to am, make another one. Am but I reading this right? Does he have four negates here? Four negates? Who's He's got four negates? Uh, Sakaias. He's getting there, right? Uh, I mean, he might. It depends what board he builds from his hand. I haven't played enough with Pendulum to know where this is going to end. I know it's a good hand. It's not been interrupted, so it should do well. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I, as for where the four negates, we'll see. <laughs> so it, it's, it's fairly standard for Pendulum to want to end on Absolute... Um, no, not Absolute. Odd Eyes Vortex Dragon, which mm. is one very good negate. So we can see uh, that's normally summoned via Odd Eyes Absolute Dragon, which is a uh, rank 7 XYZ. Uh, so you normally get the Gate Zero, which has already found its way into the extra deck. And you use the effect of Harmonizing Magician to summon Janky Magician from your deck, which is another level 7. Yep. And then probably either use that Harmonizing Magician, link it away for something, or you can use it to synchro maybe uh, Cyframe Lord Omega. Um, which is not in a gate, but it, it takes a card out yeah. of your opponent's hand. It's, it's something that it's going to throw another stone in your opponent's uh, track. Indeed. So, yeah. I, I don't know how many negates it's going to end with. But a lot. But it, it's going to be a decent it's a, it's a decent opening. I'm not sure the Pendulum player can ask for Better much opening, more. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uninterrupted turn one as well, which is pretty nice. <clears throat> a l another question in the chat was how many cards is the Pendulum deck playing is it a 60 card uh, the pendulum? pendulum is it's 40 41 cards. i think oh no sorry you got the uk deck list which yeah. is 41 oh, sorry that is the deck so the pendulum 41 know, it's, it's it's a it's an almost 40 he's almost done it yeah but he's not quite made 40 but i think the, the question was more pointing at um is he going to go to 60 cards or something is he gonna yeah that's play? some no, people like not the 60 card all. deck yeah but do you 
Uh, sound like I don't it. like it for Pendulum so much, no. So this is interesting. So he's chosen to make the Cairn Gorgon as opposed to go for... Uh, well, I suppose he didn't have the option, actually. He don't think he had access to a Harmonizing Magician. So he didn't have a chance. Hmm. But he has got a lot more cards in his hand. So not too bad. If you don't kill the scales of Pendulum, then they keep cards in their hand. Ken Gorgon is known to be a particularly sticky card for Sky Strikers to deal with, because a lot of the Sky Striker removal targets. So you've got Widow Anchor, typically to try and get over your opponent's board, which obviously targets, and you can change the target of that with Ken Gorgon, uh, or Afterburner. And you've also got the... Uh, so, I mean, I don't know if you call it a negate, and I don't know if you call it two negates, um, because it can be used twice in the same turn, maybe. And yeah. then you have the Mythical Beast Jackal, which can negate a monster effect. So it's 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 possibly two negates, if you're being generous. However, <laughs> one of those is going to get taken out by the multi-roll. So you can use multi-roll to pre prevent your opponent from responding to your spell cards. Mm. So one guy that might like to respond to your opponent's spell cards very much is the, the Cairn Gorgon, but it's not going to be able to do that anymore because of multi-roll. Right. So lots of card interactions, what you're saying. Indeed. I mean, the multi-roll is, multi is quite cool. It gets the things you can do with it become much more interesting when there's a lot more cards flying around, I think. So when, I think in the, in the Sky Striker versus Goki, you're not really very interested in it because they're not going to negate your spell cards. You're not really... That's not the thing that's going to happen. The thing that's going to happen is you're going to... Um, you know, they're going to kill you, or then, you know, they're, they're going to end with this huge board. Right. They're not going to be bothered about negating your spell cards because your spell cards won't be able to deal with your board. So it doesn't really matter. Whereas in slower matchups, where, you, you know, you can have all these neat little interactions in the Sky Striker mirror match, you know, meaning that they can't Eagle Boost your Widow Anchor, or they can't, you know, they can't respond to your Twin Twisters. So if you activate multi roll all of a sudden, if they, they've got a face down Shared Ride, they might be scared that it's going to die to uh, Twin Twisters right. or something like that. So they have to shotgun all of these cards, which is not really ideal. I'm getting the feeling that you could write a book about this matchup alone. About multi-roll? <coughs> yeah, or about, about this, this one matchup. card, yeah. One uh, of the two. So we can see here what, what tried to happen <laughs> So is that... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah Zekias tried to use Ken Gorgon on, multi, uh, on Widow Anchor, and Pascal said no. That's, that's not allowed. That's My card says no. It's very fair to just say no. Just be like... Can't do that. Sorry. Can't respond. So the question is, even if he is able to break the field or break the board to be in full lingo here, uh, is he going to be able to get rid of the scales? He does have a twin uh, twist. He's got a twin twist. That does get rid of the scales, but it does look like uh, Zekias has got a pair more in his hand. Mm -hmm. So um, he won't even mind too much. He won't mind too much, no. Uh, but I mean, having said that, I think clearing the Electromite is quite good because you want to get rid of something providing them link <coughs> zones. Mm -hmm. Because those... Are, Pendulum used to be this deck where every turn you could Pendulum summon out all these monsters of back course. again and you would kill them, you would summon them back again and that was that was pretty difficult to deal with. But now, if you don't have any link monsters, you can only summon one from the extra deck, which is not really very many. Nah. Not, not really that impressive. Okay, so the twin's going to be played here. I mean, it's clearing the scales, but I think more importantly, it's putting the extra spell in Grave extra spells, in fact, two spells in Grave, mm -hmm. uh, but enough to draw a card off Engage. So it's worth doing it earlier just to draw the card off Engage if you figure you're going to do it at some point. Does he does he have a way of uh, getting rid of Electromite? Yes. So he's got he's activating Engage now, and Engage can search either Afterburner or Widow Anchor, depending on what he prefers the feel of. Uh, so he can just search Afterburner just to kill it, or Widow Anchor to take it and link it away. Or he might just leave it up, because currently the zones being pointed to by Electromite are full. I get the feeling he's going to want to get rid of it. So people are about to find out at the moment that you're actually Tom Payne. They're like, oh, this guy knows what he's talking about. Who is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but funnily enough, we, we hear that every single time. Everybody, who, whoever's commentating with me is the best commentator ever. <laughs> <laughs> that's. I think that's just a way of bashing me, to be it's honest. It's probably a compliment to you. You make other people look good. Yeah. Yeah. Could be. Could be. I'm, I'm not convinced, to be honest. Okay. So I, I hope if he... Yeah. I mean, Gearsu's excellent here because it doesn't target. So 
Yeah, how did we end up here is one of the questions that, that we could be asking. Because it looked like um, Sekai has had the perfect opening hand. Still got three monsters on the board. It is a strong uh, two opening board, board but multi-roll is quite an interesting card in this situation because it prevents Ken Gorgon, which would normally make your board very hard to deal with. It just says... No. It just straight away says no to it. Yeah, yeah. It, just, it, just, it just nullifies it completely. I mean, it's a two-card investment, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to use the multi-roll, which isn't going to do anything else that turn until the end phase, at least. And you have to send a card to the graveyard. But if you've got those cards to use, and now he's going to get the cards back off multi-roll, so he's going to get two back in the end phase, then it seemed like a pretty good investment. <laughs> pretty good. It's pretty good, it's, it's paying dividends. It is paying dividends. I mean, I would say this is definitely, it, it's normally, if Sky Striker, if the game goes on a couple of turns, you expect the Sky Striker to take it. But we have to point out something, because we've had Sky Striker on the chat, uh, on the chat, on the stream a million times, also on the chat. Um, there was almost never a situation where Sky Striker was able to play a million cards and then end up with just three cards on the field and one card in hand. We had, to, Sky Striker, it deals with cards but I mean the pendulum guy he did a, he did have a big board right yeah, yeah I, I know but like generally speaking every time Sky Striker was able to just do its thing they ended up with four cards in hand or more so so even if you were able to then break their board again they would just come back and come back and come back that's normally the turn after it's set up I would say so normally Sky Striker has a turn to set up and now next turn he might resolve like multiple engages mm. for extra draws and that's when you're really just you just seem to have infinite cards however Sakaias is a bit under pressure in that sense. Yeah, but we're going to see... So he's, he knows that... Well, he doesn't know about that Ghost Ogre in hand, but he knows that other than that, Pascal's only got the one interruption, right? being the Widow Anchor. And if he can force out the Widow Anchor, then he can pop the... Uh, he'll be free to try and destroy the Engage, maybe with a Nightmare Phoenix, and then be hopeful that Pascal's not got anything to do next turn. Right. So uh, And we can see a big Pendulum Summon here. It's basically Pray for Pendulum. If you're a uh, fan of the archetype I at this point. It's not that much of a prayer. I, I'd be reasonably happy with uh, the Pendulum situation at the moment. It's always quite good to be able to Pendulum summon a, a big board of monsters. As we're seeing here, that's that's a lot of monsters. Uh, so an attack here forces out the Widow Anchor. And maybe Pascal's just checking whether you can use both the scale effect of Oath Dragon, which has been used, and the uh, monster effect to add back a Pendulum card. Uh, or is it a Magician? I think maybe it's got to be a Magician. And he's added back Harmonizing Magician. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm just checking <laughs> three things at the same time right now, which is hard to believe, I know, but... Um <laughs> so it's a bit awkward here, because you've got six monsters, but if you try and attack, then Widow Anchor's just going to take the biggest one, Yeah. and then you won't do any damage. If, if the opponent is smart. I would hope. <laughs> I would hope that's what would happen. If he's, if he's having a, a stroke or something... If he he's having a bad day... Yeah, he might be picking something else. Ah, but we've... See, the pendulum, pendulum do get access to all these cool extra deck cards, and I believe that extra deck card just ends the game right here. Because there's now... It can just negate the Widow Anchor, and there's nothing to stop. I mean, is just attacking for game. So Norito... He's, he's the moral leader, so... Can... Oh, no, maybe it's not game, actually. Because if he activates the Widow Anchor... Then he activates the Naruto, and then Ogre gets changed. I'm, I'm not sure that that is enough damage now without the Naruto. Right. Because none of those monsters have more than 2,000 attack. Um, however, I'm still, I'd still be fairly happy if yeah, I was... Yeah, it's going to be a very big swing. I mean, you, you want to win the game this turn, obviously. However, Sky Striker is not going to end with that many cards. No, definitely not. Like I, I don't see any way how Pascal Kim has completely turned the tables at the moment. Well, he has got an engage face down. Yeah, but one engage does not... It does a lot. A ...game win make, <laughs> is that the saying? I mean, it, it, it might be, but I don't think it's true. <laughs> yeah. Engage is the king of comebacks. One engage, you draw another, you know, you search uh, a Ray, mm -hmm. draw a card, summon Ray, get back Kagari. Yeah. Act, uh, get Kagari, add engage, draw another card. That's how you've uh, suddenly gone from, like, you've now got three cards? Four cards? You've now got four cards. You're definitely in a better spot than before. With the one engage. That's but a lot of cards. However, Tornado Dragon says no very much to that plan. There we go. See? So I was thinking Phoenix, but I think Tornado Dragon actually does a far better job. Yeah, so Sakai Because it pops the engage and, the, that is it, yeah. and, an, and another card. Interestingly enough, he did actually show the card that he drew. Uh, not a big... Not a very big deal here. Oh, what was the card? It was a trap. It um, was a Mind Crush. I wouldn't necessarily... 
Would you reveal the Mind Crush? Mind Crush is a standard card. I mean, it's a it's no. a popular card. Yeah. But it's not like a card that they n you know they're going to be playing. And so maybe you don't want to reveal the Mind Crush. It's also not a card that you necessarily play in your main deck. Very often yeah. you see that it's in a the card, side deck. It's a card that you, you wouldn't be surprised to see at all. However, it's not a card that you are expecting will be there every game. Yeah. So we saw the power there of Pendulum to be able to just... The one Widow Anchor doesn't stand up to five monsters being Pendulum Summoned. <laughs> well, who does? So, no, I mean, normally, like, yeah. Well, yeah. there are cards which do, yeah, like but, but Torrential Tribute, or, Ooh, you know, yeah. which we did see yeah. earlier. Yeah, we did see earlier. I was about um, to say. Good. We're, uh, yeah. we're getting to the point where you're doing the callbacks. So there the was a matches. dimensional barrier earlier. <laughs> this is... This whole weekend, for me, is the evolution of Tom Payne as a commentator. It's super interesting to watch. Yesterday, he couldn't even stand without shaking his legs, and today he can do go into monologues for 10 minutes and explain our stakes. So we're really seeing you growing Thanks. up on screen. Thanks, Fowley. Yeah, yeah, you're getting there. You're getting there. <laughs> uh, I think uh, next show, you can just do it on your own. We're, we're going we're gonna to have you there, basically. All right. At the end of the day. I mean all of that as a compliment, of course. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I have to clarify what I'm saying. Did I didn't think I saw Zeki as do anything to his side deck. Um, I might be wrong. Yeah, he, he made it seem like he's going to do something with it. But I mean, I don't know. I feel like Denko Seka is, is a card that is sided in when you go second with Pendulum. I love that you're making these sentences that we can just uh, cut them off in the middle and they still make sense and are hilarious when you say Denko Seka is a card full stop. Denko Seka is a card. Yeah, and it's like already a very strong statement. It is a strong statement. Yeah, not, Denko not, Seka not everything can be a card. Is a great card. Yeah, yeah, I agree. There, there is no doubt in my mind. There is a very. I love the game plan with Denko Seka. It's normal summon Denko Seka, activate some pendulum scales, pendulum summon some monsters, and attack the game. I think that is the game plan with Denko Seka. It, it is indeed. All right. So who are you favoring in the second duel who now am that Sakai has taken the first? In the second duel. Uh, I'm expecting Sky Striker to choose to go first, probably, and then I will I will go I'll go with this. Oh no, he's he's letting the Pendulum player go first. So we do have the evenly matched, and evenly matched is quite a nasty card against Pendulum because it banishes the scales as well as so you build up a big board. And the nice thing about Pendulum is you can say you have to kill my monsters, and then if you kill all my monsters, then I've still got my pendulum scales and I can summon more monsters next turn. But evenly matched actually does both in one. So I think it's, it's a good side deck option against pendulum. And he's also got the option to side in infinite impermanence, uh, a cup, any, anything to deal with that turn one Electromite. So it seems like the Twitch chat is actually rooting for pendulum magician, just because it's the underdog. Yeah. They, they are funny like that. <laughs> and also... <laughs> And, uh, yeah, we, we got another good opening hand, actually. Here. Indeed, he's got the Star Pendulum Graph. The Star Pendulum Graph is, is a bit of a risky card because it, it requires you to be able to use other cards in your hand in order to make use of it. But when you do make use of it, it replaces itself immediately, and then it's just sat there for you to use again next turn. So it's kind of like this. It gives you a, you know, it doesn't give you a plus one immediately. However, yeah. next turn, you get... Uh, it's, it's like threatening or putting your opponent under indeed. pressure in a sense. Yeah. It's a bit like, I don't know. I don't know. I was going to say the Zodiac Barrage, but I feel like that would be unfair to Barrage because Barrage is a lot better. There was this card where you put counters on. In Shard of Greed. Shard of Greed, for example. It's a indeed. bit like that. But, but this, this replaces itself immediately. Yeah. And then next turn it'll get him a plus one. It's a bit more pressure on it. Or like a future fusion. A future how, fusion. How about that? Talk, think, talk about a callback. I think the point of Future Fusion was to send your deck to the nah. graveyard, which you got to do immediately. No, well, no. you used to get to do immediately. No, now you don't. Nobody used it like that. Nobody ever. No, ever. The entire plan was to Fusion Summon. I mean, you used to fu Future Fusion for Chimeratech Fortress Dragon, and then when it came out, it killed the Future Fusion and killed itself. Yeah, that's so unfair. <laughs> to what's the Future Fusion. <laughs> All right. So again, we're seeing a pretty good opening for Sakaias. He uh, doesn't have any hand traps. Uh, his opponent, Pascal, apparently... Uh, we're not 100% sure I mean, there wouldn't sure really yet. have been that much of a, a time to use any hand traps. Yeah, um, there is an Ash. There is fact. an Ash, yeah. So there's not really been that much to Ash. This is one of the things people liked quite a lot about Pendulum last mm, format, yep. was that it wasn't too heavily bothered by hand traps. Yeah. Uh, because you can just summon all the monsters in your hand and some of them from your extra deck. So sometimes your opponent had like five dead cards in his deck just because your deck didn't mind them they're at not, all. They're not dead, but they're not... 
yeah. so good as they are against a deck like Goki, for example, right. where they are, can be. So generally, as a, I guess as a rule of thumb, if something is digging through the deck, it's more vulnerable at least to Ash, right? Um, whereas Pendulum don't use their deck so much. So we can see uh, as evidence of that that Zacchaeus is happy to run three full copies of Pot of Desires. Mm -hmm. He's got no issue really banishing cards from his deck. Um, that, that wasn't always the case with Pendulum. It wasn't, but I, I think it has been the case ever since Pot of Desires has right. been a card. I think, I think as, as long as it's been out. Well, I mean, there used to be cards in the deck, Pendulum so, some, used in the deck, yeah, like sometimes uh, they were cards the Purple like Mages and the yeah, Performer Pals. Oh, but when you but had the monkey board and yeah, stuff that he didn't want to lose. They've never really existed with Pot of Desires. So I think as long as Pot of Desires has been around, it's been played in Pendulum. Okay, fair enough. So again, uh, Norito, the moral leader, is hitting play. And this time, at the very first turn... That's one again. <laughs> and then we see Electromite again. Um, a very disappointingly low number of negates. Yeah, uh, I'm sure he's heartbroken over this. I know. I'm interested what what was ashed. I think it might have. I might have just been the pendulum. It might have just been the electromite draw that was ashed, which seems quite underwhelming. So as we said, like the ash is normally a card which, you know, s can stop other decks dead in their tracks. But against pendulum, it just stopped him draw one card after he'd already summoned five monsters. Yeah. Just learned that a couple of cards cannot be displayed for some reason. Um, ash, eagle boost, and afterburner are all in Pascal's hand as well. Well, Ash is not in his hand anymore. Not but anymore, yeah. yeah. But um, just so you guys know, these are the... The Electrum draw was actually the target for the Ash. Indeed. So we've got Naruto to stop multi-roll kind of spoiling the fun of Ken Gorgon like it did last game. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how Pascal tries to deal with it. Yeah. Um, he, he's got ways out because apparently I think Sakaius could have gone a, quite a bit bigger, couldn't he? I know, because if you Pendulum Summon before you make a Link Monster, then you only have, you, you're, you've you you only got the cards in your hand and mm -hmm. one card from the extra deck, so it's not the same as it used to be. It used to be better. But it's 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 fine. I don't see anything wrong with keeping a couple of cards in your hand. So multi-roll is really a card you want to pick up because it just forces out a negate by itself immediately. Yep. Yep. Because if it's not negated, then it sends something to the graveyard and then none of your other spells can be negated. So you might as well just negate it straight away. Yeah. Because otherwise it shuts off all your other negations. So that's probably what we're going to see happen. He's just going to negate it straight away. There, there we, we go. go. Yep. You're back in the fortune teller business. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it, it's not really fortune teller. Nah. It's a, it's a science. <laughs> We've got to go that far. Maybe it's a science. Yeah, I'm using evidence. Yeah, yeah, that's what they are doing. I'm I told you earlier. They look at the ley lines in the hand and stuff, and then indeed, yeah, that's how it works. So uh, he's just reading the Ken Gorgon very carefully, and I think the answer is no. It's not going to stop you playing engage. <laughs> uh, that is the same conclusion that he ended up with. So now he's going to. I mean, search. it might have been. What does he want to search? And yeah. the answer is, in fact, another multi roll. The first multi roll did such a good job. It did. It did force search negation. It out again. And uh, he's also get to draw a card. Uh, so. Multi-roll combines particularly well with Area Zero mm -hmm. because it can send Area Zero to the graveyard uh, to use the effect to stop your opponent responding to your spell cards and then that triggers Area Zero to special summon a ray from your deck. Didn't we see that in one of the earlier feature matches as well? Yes. Where so we even gave the player credit for not really inventing the play but coming up with that play. Uh, I think it's a fairly standard play. Yeah. Why? It's one of the... No, well, I just Sky Striker don't actually have that many tools for putting a load of monsters on the field, and this is one of them, is yeah. the Area Zero summoning a ray from the deck. All right, so here... So that is indeed what's going on. And this time around, Sky Striker is, is more in its usual I would role say, of like, amassing cards. Uh, I mean, this cards. looks quite similar to last game. Yeah, but um, he's got more cards in hand. But yeah, now the engage is being resolved this turn, which makes a big difference, because now he's going to have... whereas last time you you didn't just get this so this engage is effectively two extra cards that he's got if they just if he just drawn the sky striker cards that he searched off engage he wouldn't have drawn two cards like he's going to do with engage right so at the moment again uh sakaya shah with lots of lots lots of monsters on the field um but one by one pascal kim is Indeed. getting rid of them sky striker does do one by one 
So I, I, I assume Kagari picked up Engage. Uh, I can't see the other card that was drawn. If it was a good enough card, then it might be that he can activate a couple of, you know, maybe a Widow Anchor and something and possibly try and put game on the, the board this turn. Mm -hmm. But in all honesty, I'm not sure I've ever seen anyone OTK someone with Sky Strikers. Mm, so if he does, he not, should probably get a, an striker. award. Yeah. He's just activated up Star Goblin, so he's probably not going to try an OTK. Nah, him. he's like, yeah, I got this. I, got I think with Sky Striker, you're more, th th that's not really the plan. The plan is just to answer their board, let them do something next turn, maybe stop it a bit, and then answer their board again. Apparently, Upstart Goblin reduces your opponent's life points to a thousand rather than give them a thousand life points. <laughs> yeah, I was just double checking because I couldn't see the card at first. I thought he might have sided it in, which is, would have been the most ridiculous thing. Having an Upstart Goblin in your side deck. I can't really see a reason for that. No. No, Upstart no. Goblin is, uh, is, is, is definitely a card for the main deck. Yeah. It's, it's one of the targets that you want to side out most of the time when you don't uh, really know what else. Yes, that is something people used to do, but in Sky Striker, it's just a good card because it just puts a spell in your graveyard for nothing. Yeah. Just replace itself, puts a spell in your graveyard and gets you closer to that magic three spells. Mm -hmm. So you can just use yeah, to start drawing cards or using Widow Anchor to steal cards or just generally making your all of your sp spells better. So Pascal is still not quite done with this gigantic turn. No, he's not. Um, so what's what do we think is his plan to link summon? I should probably be able to guess here, but... I'm not going to. <laughs> That's okay. It's a Ningirsu. Yeah. Fair enough. Would you have guessed that? Um, no. I was I was guessing... I was thinking Unicorn, but I think Ningirsu is just better. Mm -hmm. It's got more attack points. So we're back to old school gaming where you want to have the monster with the most attack points. Well, they do. it does effectively the same thing. It's going to get rid of a card, and it's going to do one better than that because... Well, a Unicorn, you have to discard a card to get rid of a card. And in Gears, you have to send a card on your field to the graveyard right. to get rid of a card. But in this case, he's going to take the Naruto, and then send it with Ningirsu right. to then get rid of the scale. So it's going to leave Zakaius with only the card in his hand. Which is, which is a, a Wisdom Eye Magician, yeah. Not so we can see him. It's not perfect. He's not going to be completely out of place because he's going to be able to activate the Wisdom Eye next turn, use its scale effect. Oh. Um, so much for that. Possibly. So oh, the now, Oath yeah, Dragon. The Oath Dragon's gone. Yeah. So, yes, that was wrong. Uh, he's not going to be able to do that unless he draws another... Um, but, but credit where credit is due, like Pascal Kim really going through the motions here. No, that was... Just a picking apart one by one all of the cards in his opponent's side. It's, it's quite difficult to know what the, the ideal avenue is for uh, getting rid of your opponent's board. I mean, you can definitely do it with Sky Striker, and then you have to figure out what the most efficient way is going to leave you with the most resources. Right. And this has done a good job. Uh, and, and it's I done a good enough job for, for Zakaius to forcing him to that game. take the concession in that second game. So now it is 1-1 one, one between Pascal Kim with Sky Striker and Zakaius Shaw with Pendulum Magician. Crowd is a bit asleep today. They are, <laughs> there's like no reaction whatsoever. And I was like, yeah, okay. We get to see another game. I guess that's cool. Yeah, I guess that's good. And um, again, we're looking at the side decks. Um, and this time it's going to be Pascal who can decide who's going to go first. Is he want to go first? Go I think first? actually Zakaius gets to decide who goes first. Uh, that's a very good point. I stand corrected. Does he want to go first? I don't know. It depends... He, he might plan to, or he might plan to go second. It's, he's got cards in his side deck, to me, which indicate go second, try and just flood the board and attack the game. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't expect your opponent to have three spells in their graveyard for Widow Anchor, then you can just pendulum summon a load of monsters, and Sky Striker don't really have the tools to stop you just attacking them. Yeah, they're missing a Wabuku. <laughs> Indeed, they're missing a Wabaku, but they don't end with a, like they don't end with an impressive board of monsters. So if you had an impressive board of monsters, then your opponent just summoning a load of monsters and attacking. I mean, it might be able to kill your board, but it won't. Um, yeah, it won't end in eight thousand damage. Right. So we Whereas got Sky Striker tend to end with a fairly minimal monster board. We got thirteen more minutes on the clock. I think that's plenty of time for this matchup. Might be the first match that goes to time today. Is what I was going to say. Mm, perhaps. It, I think it depends if uh, Zekius goes first or second. I think if he goes second, then the game is normally just decided on his his turn. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, but if he goes first, then he will have at least one. Well, it can be a fairly long turn one for Pendulum. It so it might be. be that it goes on too long uh, and we see it a time. All right. Uh, I've not seen who's pointed to who or if anyone's done any pointing. I'm seeing a, a field breaker, which might mean that he's chosen to go second. What is a field breaker for those of uh, it's, us it's who are? I think it's... Maybe it's actually called Magical Mid-Breaker Field, I think is the full name, but I always get confused with it. So it, you can only activate it at the start of your main phase one, and it prevents... Uh, during each player's main phase one, I think it prevents the opponent from targeting or destroying their cards with any other cards. Okay. I, I thought at first it was like a term, as in uh, this is uh, something that breaks your board. It's, ah, it's no, a no, no, breaker. no. I was talking about a specific specific yeah, card. Exactly. So that prevents... Magical mid-breaker field. Is that what you said? Magical mid-breaker field, yeah. indeed. Okay, so now it's, we a, it's quite an old card that's seen a resurgence in plays as one of those things to stop your opponent from stopping you. <laughs> a bit like Called by the Grave. Uh, a bit a bit like Cold Wave. A bit like Cold Wave, indeed. Cold Wave and Called by the Grave almost sound the same. Mm -hmm. uh, and Or maybe like Neospace and Aquadolphin as well. One of those, like, I'm going to counter your counters and then kill you. One of those, I win the European Championship with it. Indeed. <laughs> it's a pretty good card. It won it all all by itself. So there is a slight issue with mid-breaker field, which is that... Oh, there's the Denko Seca. Whoa! And we can hear the cheers. Yeah, finally the crowd just uh, woke up. I think if you're Zacchaeus here, you're going to activate that pendulum call and just pray that there is no ash. Yeah, if you can see Pascal Kim, he's, he's not super happy about this, to make an understatement. And uh, if there is no ash, then you're almost certainly expecting an OTK. Almost certainly. So Zacchaeus Shaw has an opening, courtesy of his Denko Seca. Denko Seca being a card. Shutting, <laughs> exactly. It is a card, I told you. It is sometimes, a card. Sometimes less is more. Less is more. So you, you just stop after Denko Seca is a card, and we're good. We got, we got a full sentence. I mean, Denko Seca is so nasty because your opponent still has to be able to find a way to kill it on the turn after. Yeah. If they want to use any of their leftover cards. All right. So he can go crazy. How crazy can he go? Uh, what are the other cards in his hand? So what? You got I, a harmonizing I'm magician, Oath Dragon magician, Chronograph. Fully sorcerer. aware as to whether Pendulum have got a very efficient way of getting rid of the Sky Striker extra deck monster without triggering Ray, because that would be ideal. Is to get rid of the um, yeah, is to get rid of the Shizuku without triggering the Ray back and make it that much easier to attack the game. Uh, and I don't know. I mean, there there probably is something in the extra deck which does that for you. Mm -hmm. um, but as for what it is, maybe there isn't anything. <laughs> uh, maybe he just has to be able to deal with the fact that there's going to be... So it basically just puts one more blocker on the field, right, if you activate... Um, but he has got the... You know, Shizuku does give him an extra zone as well. So that Chronograph Sorcerer is just going to come back. Hmm. It's going to be interesting to see this. I'm, I'm fully expecting this to end in uh, an OTK from Zacchaeus at this point, though. It's interesting that the chat is just repeating over and over again, stick to the plan, stick to the plan. Stick to the game plan. Yeah, yeah that was a term popularized by an American player who particularly enjoyed pendulums. Although stick to the game plan did refer to summoning three Electromites, which is no longer the game plan. <laughs> no longer. Because it will it will result in you being kicked out from the tournament. Yeah, it's not the strongest plan. You're only anymore. allowed one. Well if then you again try we and use more than one that's We have seen somebody rules. with a hero lifts in his deck and no targets. Indeed, indeed. But that is not against the rules. That's not against, that's true. Unless he tries to I mean activating it is against the rules. Yeah, exactly. Here we go. However that's <laughs> it's, it's it's you know, it's less obviously something that you shouldn't be doing. Yeah. It's 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 more of a mistake. All right. So, yeah, I think it's just sort of Zacchaeus to pick his, his favorite way of OTKing his opponent at this point. Um, That's too early for that. If I'm to... to the, the fat lady hasn't started singing yet. To be honest, uh, <coughs> Ash, so I, I mentioned that he wants to activate this pendulum call and hope it doesn't get ashed, but Ash is not a card you expect to see mm -hmm. uh, because it's not actually very strong against Pendulum. So it's one of those cards you always expect to see game one because it's such a popular main deck card. Over games two and three, people often side it out. Right. 
And also, the, there is no interaction that Pascal has. Uh, uh, the no, so the ray is going to come back from the graveyard, but that's it. And the Supreme King Dark Rebellion Dragon does a lot of damage, so I'm pretty sure this is a uh, game for Zacchaeus. All right, let's see. So He's it reduces the opponent's monster to zero attack, mm -hmm. and then gains the amount of attack, so I think it's just going to swing for 4,000. And then the ray's going to come back, but then Zacchaeus has got four other monsters on the field, so between them I think they're going to attack for more than 4,000. Yeah, Pascal is... Um just he's, reading, he's the just card. reading the card. He's I mean, it might, like it's it's a card that doesn't come up that much, so no. it might be one that you have to double check. And but look at the conviction in Sakai's face. I think he's, he knows. Yeah, he's looking like somebody. That's, I think he knows. He's either about yeah, to win a duel go. or mark you in this case, it is winning a duel. <laughs> and there he goes. That's a bit of applause from the audience who is like giving him credit for that Denko Seka drop. It was basically like the Yu-Gi-Oh version of a mic drop. That's the Denko Seka. The Denko Seka. Yeah, Denko Seka has been one of these. Very yeah. powerful cards. We're going to talk about that in our post-match analysis. So finally it paid out to pay close attention to those side decks. We, we talked about Denko Seka, mentioned it, highlighted it as a card that could make a difference. Uh, you were saying between games one and two, I'm surprised he didn't side it in. Or it didn't look like he was siding it in, if I remember uh, correctly. Well, we didn't know because yeah, we didn't know Denko for Sek is definitely a card you want going second. Yeah. And if you're, I mean, nowadays you just don't know it's all the time whether your opponent's going to choose to go right. first or second, especially against Sky Striker, which is very capable of having a lot of hand traps and going second as he chose to do. Did he want to hold it back for the possible third game? Um, no, I mean, not really. I just don't think it's a card you'd want to risk having in your deck going first. Because Pendulum is notorious for needing all of its cards mm -hmm. to be combo pieces, and Denko Seka is not a combo piece. No, it's not. So if you go first and you have Denko Seka, you have only four cards. Whereas if you go second, you have uh, five cards and the Denko. Yeah. And not only that, but the requirement just to try and attack the game, just try and like put 8,000 damage on the board, is actually far, far less than to assemble a good turn one combo. Right. So you, you want to be doing more with less cards, which is much harder. So that's why it's much better going second. Yeah, so there you had a perfect analysis by our friend Tom today. Getting better and better round <laughs> after round. Um, anything else that we need to point out? We did say that both of these deck lists were fairly standard. The three Mind Crush um, by Pascal were... I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say the Pendulum deck is standard. I would just say it looks very much... The main deck just looks like it used to. You, like you, that's but what I don't said, think yeah. there is a standard Pendulum deck anymore. Oh, okay. Now that you, people might want to incorporate some different cards into their main deck in order... Because you can't do the same combos so that you used pendulum to. Pendulum exists in the Chaos Zone. It does, moment. it does. But no, the Sky Striker deck is a very standard-looking Sky Striker right. deck to me. Okay, well, we did see one tiny little thing that we mentioned. He did show the Mind Crush when he lost the first game. Maybe to throw his opponent off track because he was about to side them out. I, I guess he'd side them out. I don't think your opponent shows you too many cards in the pendulum. So a lot of decks... Do you, do you I'm play not sure. any differently when you know your opponent has a mind crush? Or could have a mind crush? Sometimes you do. Uh, yeah, sometimes. Uh, I don't think he, he would have thought about it that much. It's the sort of thing you just say, yeah, just scoop and then you Yeah, he, he might card. just be a really nice guy and be like, oh, okay, let's go to the next game. And not really thinking about what he's doing exactly in that moment. However, both of these guys guaranteed a spot in day number two. Uh, one of them is undefeated, the other guy is 7-1. So pretty much as close as you can get to a perfect record. Indeed. So um, we're going to see them again tomorrow, and very good chance that uh, one of them is even going to advance to the top 64. All right, guys. You're going to hear some more analysis, some more breakdown. Um, Luke and Matt is, are going to run us through those three little duels that took the entire round uh, for the first time ever today because we, we didn't really go to time so far. So let's hear it from those two guys. Thank you very much, Oli. And we are with Zeki, I've been told he likes to be called. <laughs> Zeki, congratulations on taking that down 2-1. Thank you. Uh, so when you sat down for that match, uh, we were having a bit of a talk before we started this segment, and you built your deck specifically to beat Sky Strikers. Yeah, that's right. I was previously playing Goki. But but come, on, come in a bit. Come on a bit closer. I was previously playing Goki, and it just was matchup wasn't good enough, so I decided okay. on Pendulums. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, you've got a pretty decent tournament history behind you to, to back up this win as well. So that's that's pretty good. Thank you have you. a 66% win rate last season. 66. That's pretty good. Mm. Yeah, a lot of people get disappointed with their win rates because they think like it should be like 80, 90. No one, no one has that win rate. It's like Marcello, Marcello and Luke Marcello did Parks. that once, yeah. <laughs> Marcello and Luke Parks, that's it. So, you know, 66 is pretty good. Uh, like if you think the average win rate is 50 percent then 60 is like anything over 60 is pretty good it's good yeah so is there any other reason why you decided to play your deck 
you a particular fan of Pendulum? Or? I played Pendulums for ages. It's always on and off for me. I always play it and lose it. And like, I've been playing it since it came out originally. It just seems right. like such a powerful mechanic. And even with Electromite at one, it's still, like, it still has ma- crazy potential. And uh, like, no one plays Ogres and stuff like that anymore. So it's just, it always goes through. I see. So you're planning to take advantage on the fact that your deck's going largely uncontested in people's side decks, like things like anti-spell yeah. fragrances have all come out, uh, unending nightmares, all those sort of things that yeah. have been stripped out. And but as people prepare for what the Sky Striker matchup, you think that's what most people are preparing for this weekend? Yeah, everyone is prepared for Sky Striker matchup. And that's why, like, yeah. Pendulum Call was super strong because of Twin Twisters, etc. Yeah. Have you been watching uh, plenty of Finn Bakewell's videos of uh-huh. coverage? Yeah? yeah. I, 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 that would have been a really bad question if you'd have been like, no, nah, no, nah, I didn't watch Who's any. Who's that guy? Who's that guy? Yeah. <laughs> Who's that? I heard of a game plan. What, what no, no, think? we're not talking about that guy. We're not allowed to talk about that guy. <laughs> what, what do you think about Finn in, uh, in playing Pendulum? He's he been playing Pendulums. So he's been doing well with it for ages. He's a great player with Pendulums. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's the best Pendulum player I've ever yes. seen. You can't say that when we have a Pendulum player XO on the stage, <laughs> Luke. That's no, not but, cool, man. I bet you would say the same, right? Yeah, he was a great player, yeah. Yeah. He so, knows when to play it. Yeah. So going through those games, like um, the, fr- you seem very, very confident going into there. Uh, game one, uh, your field, entire field almost got picked apart completely, and then you just went, "Oh, I could just bench them someone again," and uh, I got you. Yeah. Uh, was Was there any point in that game where you were actually worried, or did you just did you know that was going to happen? So, the opening hand is like you rely on harmonizer magician quite more, and if you don't have access to harmonizer magician, your board comes up underwhelming, and it usually end up just like uh, resources and then make a small board that they'll struggle to break and then you can come back with a full uh, full like, OTK. Yeah, get them on the counter swing. Because uh, like game two, we saw something very similar again, except the um, multi-roll got to set, like load all the bases on that. So he picked apart the field, then had like four other cards. Yeah. Um, what were your thoughts going on, Sack? Because you went for the uh, Karen Gorgon again, which uh, got shut down by the multi-roll. Yeah, kind of, uh, motor roll is like the main issue. That's why I always, it's always the first negate. You have to negate it, otherwise it, there's no point of it anymore. But uh, yeah, kind of gorging just makes it, it without motor roll, they cannot like out the board. It's really a big struggle. Yeah, we Ken, did... Ken, Ken Gorgon is definitely like one yeah. of my favorite Exceed monsters. <laughs> when, it, when it came out, it was just amazing. He was super underrated, I think, initially. I think, oh, yeah, no, good point. I, I, I don't know why I even said that. Yeah, when it came out, it was really bad because it was um, artifact format and Mor- Morale Tack oh, yeah, was just target. able to clean it real <laughs> easy. But then I think, I'm trying to remember what format it was afterwards, but it suddenly became really relevant, like, just accidentally. People were playing an Evil Swarm or something or some, some kind of rank 4 deck. But yeah, it was, it was really good. And it's, a, it's, it's huge as well. It it's one of the bigger rank 4 monsters. Mm-hmm. It's really powerful. My notes for your final game was just Denko Saka and a lot of exclamation marks followed by smack. Yeah, Denko Saka is like, it's the MVP of the weekend. It's just, it, they can't play around it either. There's no way to do it. Yeah. They, you just normal summon it and then it just turns off the whole Sky Striker board and it's really easy to OTK. What, what do you think is your worst matchup for, for this weekend? True Draco is an outer guys. Uh, they're scary decks. If they, if they win the dice roll and they're setting up anti spells and multiple floodgates it's really difficult but if I win the dice roll then it should be okay okay well t- I can tell you so uh, of of the players who have played Pendulum against True Draco uh, it's currently up 52% win rate in so favour of True Draco in favour of Pendulum oh Pendulum wow, okay. 2% favoured in that so matchup that's pretty, that's pretty good let's see is there any uh, is there any really bad ones uh, no, to be honest, Pendulum's looking pretty good. Oh, Altergeist. It's yeah. got a 20% win rate against so Altergeist. So Walker's right. Why is the Pendulum deck really bad against Altergeist? So like, for this, how, how many times has that match occurred? Uh, Altergeist. We've had 27 games, so okay. not all that many. Just because there's not that many Pendulum players, but still, that's a reasonable number, right? 27 games is more than you would play in this tournament. Mm-hmm. So, you know, why, why do you think that? I think it's mostly because uh, people make the incorrect boards against them. Like, okay. you, uh, you make... You don't want to make XYZs, like, how you win that game is you, it's a resource game. You just want, if you have five monsters on board, they can't deal with five monsters, and then yeah. your next turn's really strong. Like, yeah, okay. So that's super interesting. So the, basically, your suggestion is that um, the pendulum players are approaching the matchup wrong, which is why the results are going in favor of the Altergeist, and it and should be, I just need to keep, mult, go wide, lots of guys, and that'll get me there. Initially, I was making Tornado and Naruto's and... Trying uh, to grind directly. Do, like, big like negates and stuff and then Melusik's a big problematic card it just yeah. removes the whole board 
Yeah. So we just saw that we, we saw you beat um, Sky Striker. However, the, the win rate right now for Pendulum is only 34% against Sky Striker. And that was your favorite version. matchup as well. You, matchup. You're taking this completely backwards. <laughs> yeah. Well, this this could mean that you're playing a different build of Pendulum to the other the other ones. Mm. That's something that I, I can't take into account here. Um, so that's that's pretty interesting, though, right? That <laughs> that you, is, uh, you, you you may have built it, or you may just get out the correct boards or something. I might have been getting lucky as well. I am yeah, no. possible. What what do you, what do you think is the like big reasons why 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 some other players may not be doing so well against Sky Striker Pure? I just believe they could be setting up the wrong boards, going for the wrong stuff, like, you don't want to, like, resource, like, Carnegorgan Vortex is usually enough, like, okay. or Carnegorgan Naruto is usually enough. Okay, so you think that, um, you just think that you've, you've kind of cracked what you need against those matchups? Yeah, I believe so. Okay, good. That's a good shout, man. Uh, do, you, do you have anybody you want to give a shout out to back home while we've got you up here and the thousands of people watching you, not to make I, you nervous at all? That we, 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 before he gives a shout out, we got plenty of people in the audience who have been de- trying to distract him during uh, during his interview. I've not actually been looking. No, no, I'm he's sorry. been doing real good. He's been doing real good. So, uh, yeah, please. The biggest shout out games, T Zero Games. It's just my team. Uh, Oli Hickey helps me out so much. He helps me with all cards. He's one of the nicest people. And, yeah. Thanks awesome. a lot to him. All right. Great. Sounds like well, a top man. Yeah. So that was it. Uh, we had another heckle. Uh, I think it was from Ollie. Um, and that's it for this round. So we're going to be right back with our final round of Swiss here at the 200th YCS for Europe. See you guys soon.